What's going on, baseball fans? How are we doing? So we're a little more than a third of the way through the season, and in this video, I want to go over the players that I think are the most surprising this season so far. Let's go talk about it. Starting off my list at number 10, I have David Robertson. I know all too well about David Robertson giving my Red Sox so many problems over the years while he was with the Yankees and yet again having a very good season with the Cubs. But why do I find him surprising? Well, he just had Tommy John surgery not too long ago. He's 37 years old, but my goodness, this guy has found his form with the Cubbies this year. Look at the numbers. An ERA of 1.59, a FIP of 2.21, 12.7 strikeouts per nine. He has seven saves, a very good season with the Cubs. And actually, if we take a look at the leaderboards on Fangraphs, he is right now 18th in Fangraph War. Not too bad if you ask me. David Robertson, man, he's going to be a hot commodity when it comes to the trade deadline. There's no reason for the Cubs to hang on to him. I'm very excited to see where Robertson ends up at the trade deadline. Coming in at number nine, I have Kyle Wright. Kyle Wright has been so good for the Braves this year, and the Braves are just red hot lately. Kyle Wright's been a big reason for that. Take a look at the numbers that he has so far. 12 starts, a 2.57 ERA, a 2.85 FIP, almost 10 strikeouts per nine, a half a home run run per nine right around three walks per nine solid numbers overall now you might be asking well why is this surprising he was the fifth overall pick in the first round of the 2017 MLB draft but if you take a look at the numbers from when he came up in 2018 he has just put up some awful numbers over the years it's definitely taken him some time to find his form I mean look at the ERA that he had last year over two games he had a 10 ERA over six innings last year go back to 2020 he had eight starts ERA of 5.21 5.90 FIP so it's definitely taken him some time to really find his footing in the major leagues, but my goodness, he is having himself a very good season. If we take a look here, he ranks 14th overall in Fangraph War among all qualified starting pitchers. Kyle Wright has been a very nice story this year, and to me, quite a surprise. Coming in at number eight, I have Tyler Anderson. If you go back to this past offseason, Tyler Anderson was a late signing. He's always been more of a back end of the rotation kind of a guy, but man, oh man, he has been huge for the Dodgers this year. Over 11 games and nine starts, a 3.07 ERA, a 3.21 FIP, eight and a half strikeouts per nine, under one and a half walks per nine, under a home run per nine. These are really solid numbers, his best numbers since his rookie season back in 2016. Now, why do I I find him surprising I mean these are good numbers obviously but he's also just been such a big part of this Dodgers rotation I don't think a lot of people expected that they've had a lot of injuries Kershaw recently just came back they haven't had Bauer all year probably who knows if he'll ever even pitch again uh but they've had a lot of guys going down this year and he has stepped up in a big way for them Tyler Anderson to me is one of the better surprises this year Coming in at number seven, I have Paul Blackburn. Everyone wants to talk about how Frankie Montaz is going to be a hot commodity at the trade deadline, but can we show some respect for Paul Blackburn? Over 12 starts, a 2.31 ERA, a 3.12 FIP. Now, he's not going to strike out a lot of guys, only a 17.9% K percentage. He gets more ground balls, a 51.3 ground ball percentage. Now, with Paul Blackburn, why do I find him surprising? Well, just take a look at his numbers throughout the years. I mean, last year, over nine starts, he had a 5.87 ERA, a 5.47 FIP. His career ERA is a 4.62, and that's down to a 2.31 this year. His FIP career-wise, 4.19. His FIP this, this year is a 3.12. He is just having a sensational season. And what I find really interesting about Paul Blackburn, the fact that he's a ground ball, he's a ground ball kind of a guy the A's have actually been shifting less for him this year. If you take a look here, last year there was a 30.6% shift percentage against right-handed hitters. Against lefties last year, it was at a 75.3. But this year, it's down over 10% against righties and about 15% against lefties. That is really pretty cool if you ask me. And also, with Paul Blackburn, you're probably thinking, well, what has he been doing this year that's you know making him a better pitcher? Well, if you take a look here, in 2020, he was throwing his curveball 6.3% of the time. Last year in 2021, it was up to 12.2. He is throwing it even more, 18.5%. His curveball this year has been very good, a negative eight run value. It's one of the better curveballs in the game. I like me some Paul Blackburn. Could we possibly see him get moved at the deadline? We'll have to wait and see. But he has definitely been a nice surprise for me this year. 
Coming in at number six, I have Jeremy Pena. Carlos Correa, who? Jeremy Pena has just completely stepped up this year. He is on his way to winning a Rookie of the Year. He did just tweak his knee today. I, hopefully, he'll be okay moving forward. But Jeremy Pena having a very good season. If we actually go take a look here at the leaderboards for rookies, Julio Rodriguez has been coming on pretty strong as of late. But Jeremy Pena still sitting here at the top with a 2.5 wins above replacement on Fangrass. But look at the numbers this year. A 277 batting average, a 333 on base, a 471 slugging, a 133 WRC+, plus, 9 homers, 27 RBIs, 6 stolen bases. But it's not just solid offense. He's one of the best gloves out there. And actually, if we go take a look at the leaderboards when it comes to fielding, Jeremy Pena, as of right now, is the top shortstop defensively in all of Major League Baseball, as you can see right here. Jeremy Pena, why do I find him surprising? Well, the fact that he's doing this much at this age, at 24 years old, his first year in the Major Leagues, he has just completely made people forget about Carlos Correa, their star player. I, I love what Jeremy Pena is doing. To me, he's been a... I knew he was going to be a solid player. I just didn't think he was going to be this good. And to me, that's quite surprising. Coming in at number five, I have Brandon Drury. Brandon Drury has, in my opinion, been one of the most underrated players in the game. I haven't heard anyone talking about this guy, and we need to start talking about him a little bit more. 53 games this year, he's hitting 269, a 335 on base, a 508 slugging, a 129 WRC+, plus, 12 homers. But what I also like about Brandon Drury is that he can play multiple positions. He's played third, second, first. He's even played shortstop a couple of times this year. Uh, Brandon Drury, I just don't think you're hearing a lot about him because he's been on just a bad team with the Cincinnati Reds. Now, why do I find him surprising? Well, just take a look at his numbers over the years. He's never really done anything. The most home runs he's had in a season was 2016 with the Diamondbacks when he had 16 homers. He's already at 12 and we're, what, a little more than a third of the way through the season. Brandon Drury is on his way to having a career year. Now, everyone's talking about Luis Castillo being a hot commodity for the trade deadline, but I think, I wonder, could you maybe pair Brandon Drury in a trade with Castillo. Maybe the Dongers, they've been having some injuries. Brandon Drury could be a nice utility player for them. I don't know. And obviously, Luis Castillo would be good for them too. But Brandon Drury, in my opinion, one of the better surprises this year. Coming in at number four, I have Michael King. Michael King has been so good for this Yankees bullpen this year. Are you kidding me? 20 games, a 2.62 ERA, a 1.91 FIP, 12 strikeouts per nine, only two walks per nine, a half a home run per nine. Holy cow, this guy's having a really good year out of the bullpen. 34 innings overall. Fangraphs considers him the best reliever in all of Major League Baseball. Man, oh man, he's been a game changer, especially with Aroldis Chapman not being effective this year, having the Achilles problem. Chad Green recently going down, needing Tommy John. They've been having some injuries. Um, honest, uh, uh, also, Jonathan Loisaga. Uh, he has stepped up in a big way for them. And what I like about Michael King, if you take a look here, the big reason for his success is he is striking out a lot more guys. Take a look here. Uh, right around nine strikeouts per nine last year. That's not bad, but that's up to 12 this year. He's walking less guys. He had a 3.4 walk per nine last year, and that's down to two. I mean, my goodness, Michael King, he has really stepped up in a big way this year. Easily one of the best surprises in Major League Baseball this year. Coming in at number three, I have Martin Perez. What the heck is going on with Martin Perez this year? I didn't see any of this with the Red Sox. What the heck is going on? Martin Perez is having a phenomenal year with the Texas Rangers, his second go around with them. 12 starts, a 2.18 ERA, a 2.72 FIP, and these were actually lower. His last time out, he got hit pretty hard by the White Sox, so these numbers actually just uh, jumped up. Now, Martin Perez, why is he a surprise? He's never really pitched at this level at all. His ERA has either been in the fours, the fives, or even the sixes. His FIPS have never really been that good. He's never really been a big time strikeout guy. He's gotten in trouble with some command in his career, but this year, he is walking a career low 2.1 per nine. He's not giving up any home runs this year. That's under right around a quarter of a home run per nine. That is phenomenal. Martin Perez, he has really figured it out this year. Now, with Martin Perez, he's always been a little better in the first half. We start to see him kind of take step back, steps back in the second half. So we're going to have to wait and see if he can keep this consistent throughout the year. But my goodness, he has been so good for the Texas Rangers this year. And to me, 
one of the biggest surprises in all of Major League Baseball. At number two, I have Taylor Ward. Taylor Ward was setting the world on fire in the first couple of months of the season. He's been running into some injuries lately, so he has only played in 39 games so far. But look at the numbers this guy's been putting up. 324 batting average, a 432 on base. Are you kidding me? A 625 slugging, a 201 WRC+, 10 homers, 26 RBIs. My God goodness he's been having a really good year he's been running into some injuries shoulder hamstring neck recently but if you take a look at the leaderboards on Fangrass, he is still the 11th ranked best offensive player this year and that's with only 39 games my goodness if he can have a clean bill of health the rest of the way who knows where he could end up but he has been quite the surprise this year because if you take a look and he was drafted in the first round keep that in mind 2015 the 26 overall pick so the talent has always been there it's just taken him quite a while to get to this point he's had a couple of cups of coffee along the way but this year he is just putting it all together and why do i find it surprising i mean he just hasn't even come close to these kind of numbers at all i mean triple a back in 2018 he had some really good numbers there hit 352 a 442 on base uh 2018 and double a he was really good but in the last few years, he just hasn't really even come close to these kind of numbers, except for AAA in 2021. Um, and that's what got him, got him called up last year. And this year, he's just putting it all together. This is quite the surprise, in my opinion. And coming in at number one, I have Nestor Cortez. Nasty Nestor is having an amazing year this year for the Yankees. My goodness, the Yankees have been so good this year, and Nestor Cortez has been a huge reason for it. 11 starts, a 1.96 ERA, a 2.84 FIP. My goodness, right around 10 strikeouts per nine, under two walks per nine. That's a solid strikeout to walk ratio, uh, under a home run per nine. Just so so good this year and he doesn't even throw that hard man he's just got really good stuff he's been a great story this year and you know actually some yankee fans might even say you know this isn't this isn't really much of a surprise at all because if you look at the numbers last year he was really solid last year over 22 games for the yankees a 2.90 era a 3.78 fip right around the same strikeouts a little more walks a little more home runs but overall good season for cortez last year but man he has just really got it going on this year man if you take a look at the leaderboards on Fangraphs, uh nestor cortez at the moment is has the 18th highest Fangraph war also i forgot to mention with martin perez he ranks eighth overall what the heck is going on with martin perez this year thank you for giving that to the red sox the past couple of years come on perez uh but nestor cortez he has earned the nickname nasty nestor he has just been a great story this year and i also just want to point out too he was drafted back in 2013 in the 36th round he was the 1094th pick overall that year he has bounced around a lot in his career he was with the yankees for a long time five seasons in the minor leagues he went to baltimore came back to the yankees went to seattle came back to the yankees it's just a great story he's been a journeyman his whole career he's been a, he's a late bloomer i just love what nesta cortez is doing this year so that's my list tell me what you think down below in the comments did i leave anyone off do you think some guys should have been higher lower let me know what you think down below but that's all i have for right now thanks for watching and i'll talk to you next time